welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to finish off our Italian Greyhound by working on the rest of this guy's body. Everything you need like before is in the description box including links to all the previous parts. Um, I'm just going to get straight into it this time. So I've zoomed right into the bottom section of the um, Italian Greyhound and we're just going to get to work now on um, the final parts of the chest and then it's going to be a matter of darkening up areas. So we're going to start as usual with our warm grey one as the base layer and go from there. So I'm just going to start this section because we have a really nice light highlight and I'm just going to start by playing the warm grey one as our base layer along this neck. So this is the final section of the neck and this is going to start our transition into that chest. Um, I may have to adjust my lighting. Oh, and my easel is moving. Hang on. Okay, hopefully this is better. So just going in with that warm grey one as our base layer. And again, we're just going to do it section by section and just build it up slowly. So I'm just going to bring this down ever so slightly into here because I know we're going to get some highlights. Okay, I'm then going to go in with my warm grey 4 and I'm again making sure we follow in that fur direction and just building up the shape of this neck. Going over some of that grey that we've already got in. I know it's a bit dark today with the lighting, it's quite dark outside and I've tried my best to um, get rid of shadows but um, hopefully where I'm drawing you can see well enough. And again just building up this one grey far along here as well. So this section that we're doing is part of the neck and then it's going to transition into the chest and shoulders. So as we're doing this we need to be aware that that's what's going to be happening. Then taking my nugget and I'm going over all of this. So our next um, tutorial is going to be a spaniel. Um, I've chosen a spaniel. It's going to be a the head study of this spaniel so that we can really focus on that curly ear and that's going to be the main focus of the next tutorial. Uh, back to the warm grey four. So like the focus on this tutorial was our tonal values, getting our darks and our lights in so that it, we've got that contrast to make it look realistic. Um, so the focus of the spaniel will be um, on the curly ear. Okay. And then I'm going to come in again with my warm grey one and we're just going to add this base layer now across the top of this neck. Medium pressure, we want to smooth and flatten the tooth out ever so slightly so that we can build on top of this. Get some nice detail work coming in on top. Making sure I'm using the sharp point of this warm grey one as well. Having the sharp pencil is going to help smooth out the tooth for this um, paper. Okay, and again I'm starting with the warm grey 5 and I'm adding this in this darker section where I can see the fur is transitioning over the shoulder and the fur is starting to change directions. So I'm making sure I'm constantly looking at this reference photo and following the direction of that fur. And 
and again coming across here the one grey four just going to help us get this nice blended transition and then going back to the copper along here and this copper is just going to start defining that fur direction remember we will be going over the top of this copper tone with the um, greys and we're going to introduce the gold in a minute So I'm just following that fur direction here and then I'm going to grab the gold and I'm now going in um, over the top of the base layer with the gold. Following the fur direction. short pencil strokes because we're drawing short fur so it does take time and we're just building up these layers slowly but even just by doing this gold layer and the bit of copper we're really starting to get that fur direction in now i've then gone back to the warm gray four and i'm just gonna go over the top and just darken here and again I'm just always always following that fur direction along here is just going to be a little bit darker so you see I'm just blending in the fur making sure everything's nice and smooth but that we can still see some of this fur direction and this is what by building up the layers this is what we're doing we're just slowly building up a nice definition and a nice look to this fur Okay, I've now got the one grey two and I'm going over this and I'm making sure I'm really following this fur direction now. So this is sort of the top of this neck and it's curving round. This is quite a prominent feature here, so we really want to focus here. So we bring this round. Now I'm not going to finish this section yet because we need to work on um, here and come across the page. I just wanted this mapped in so that I knew sort of where we're heading towards. Okay, right. So we're going to start working across um, his back here. So going in with my copper first. Just over this base layer again, following that fur direction. Remember that underneath the fur is the structure of the dog, and that's essentially what we are uh, drawing. We're drawing the structure of the dog by using the fur to follow the contour shapes of the bone structure and the muscle structure underneath. Okay, um, and then I'm going to get my one grey three down the back here. Sorry, I know this is going to be a bit blurry just while we work on this section here. Okay, um, I'm going to get my 
gold and I'm going to use the gold for the rest of this little section here. Again, following fur directions, it's going over this shoulder now. Short pencil strokes. So the next full tutorial will come out uh, next month. And in the meantime, I think I'm going to do some little mini tutorials. So uh, more like time lapses where I just briefly explain what I'm doing and why um, as I'm drawing some eyes. Um, and I will do again like links to reference photos and line arts so that you can have a go. But I want the focus tutorials um, mainly on the YouTube to be um, ones that you can pick up tips but maybe have a go yourself without following along step by step and then we do these big focus tutorials where I talk uh, big real time tutorials where I talk you through everything and hopefully you can apply the little mini tutorials to the bigger tutorials and the bigger tutorials to the mini tutorials I want to be able to give you that confidence to do these studies um, yourself. And then if I um, do a Patreon late, later in the year, I will have a focus tutorial, a fo focused tier where the focus tutorials will be real time um, for those that want to just do the focus tutorials. Okay, and then I'm going over with the warm grey too over all of that. I hope that made sense I was trying to talk about. Okay, right, so we do need to darken down here. So I'm going to take my burnt umber first. And I am going to start to just darken along here with the burnt umber. Again, short pencil strokes and following that third direction. Oops. And then take the one grey. Um, actually, I think I'm going to take the one grey five. Um, I was going to do the four, but I think five so that it's um, that little bit darker. Just getting that piece of paper under my hand again. And then using the one grey five over the top of this burnt umber. And then just darkening down here and blending it outwards so we know where we need to darken. And I'm just going to blend upwards here as well. So as I darken one area, I'm coming back through and just darkening up the areas near it that need to be darkened. Okay, like so. Right, so we're going to come back in again with the one grey one as a base layer. And I'm going to actually cover quite a lot of this shoulder area. Um, just so that we can keep working um, in a sort of a bigger way, bigger section. You can break this down into smaller sections if um, doing such a large section is too overwhelming for you. Um, but I am liking doing sort of a bigger section at the moment. Hang on, let me just close it. Before my laptop starts making noises. <laughs> okay. So I've sharpened the one grey one. Now, I know before we used the one grey two as a base layer, but we have got some highlights going on in this um, part of the dog's body. And um, because I'm not quite sure yet, again, just slowly building up sort of how dark I want those highlights to be. I'm finding it safer just to go in with a warm grey one. And then build it up from there. 
we probably will end up going to about one grey two, one grey three, but if we start off with the one grey one, we can also use this base layer as part of our highlights um, and have it shining through. So again, just applying along here. I think as well, I'm going to get my tape out and we will tape the edges so that we can have a nice smooth straight edge for this guy. Um, I think he'll suit having the straighter edge because he's got a lot of curves going on. Um, so that will be a nice balance, which I might do once I've actually applied this base layer. Just gonna come a bit further down here. Again, I've not rubbed out any graphite lines because I've done them light enough that I know that some of these areas are going to be darker and they won't show up. If you've drawn your graphite lines too hard, um, you can erase them. And across here as well. Okay, so that's quite a large section mapped out with this base layer. Base layer is quite rough. You can see it's a bit darker in places. I'm not too worried because we're going to be going over all this. Okay, so I'm taking my one grey four and I'm bringing this section down here. And again, I'm following that fur direction. So it's a bit more vertical here. And then just going to blend that outwards, where it's going to start blending into that bit of fur here. Like so. And then along here is going to be darker, so I'm just going to use this to just help me map in what's going on. And following the fur direction, light pressure, we can go darker if we need to. And I do think in a minute, I'm going to finish this little bit here. I'm going to get those sides taped off because um, I keep thinking about it. And I'm the kind of person that if I don't do it now, I'm just going to keep thinking about it. <laughs> so I use Framus tape to do my masking. You can use masking tape, um, low tack tape, whatever tape you've got. And all I'm going to do is just get some really nice straight lines across the bottom here and along the side. So that we've got a nice, we'll have a nice straight line. Um, and then we know where this base layer is, we start coming down the neck and chest, where this base layer is going up to. So I've just measured out a little bit of framers tape, very roughly, and I'm just going to apply it along the bottom here, so you can just about see that. And just tape very light pressure on the top of that. Um, so if I get the framers tape again here, and I just tear a little bit off so this is low tack and it's acid free make sure that the tape you're using is acid free um, and then I'm just gonna bring it up and again just tape along so now I've got I've got a nice little line that I'll be able to draw my pencil up and I can draw over the top of this tape and we'll get a nice straight edge along um, our dog's um, body here. So I'm going to come in with my warm grey free along here now and again constantly looking back at this reference photo at this fur direction just making sure that I am getting the fur in the right direction. As I've mentioned in the previous parts I'm not worried about this being exact to the reference photo but I do still want it to look realistic, so I still need that fur going in the correct direction. And along here. Um, 
and then I'm going to take my copper and just go over the top. And I'm going to bring it down here a little bit more. And then I'm going to take my gold. I want this more of a yellowish grey tone. And I'm using very, very short strokes. I'm actually going to sharpen this. And then again, I'm making sure that I'm following all these curves that are going on. So if you need to map out areas where the, cur the fur is turning and changing direction, if you need to do that earlier on, do it. But it's just about constantly looking, always looking at that reference photo. So it's reference photo drawing, reference photo drawing, reference photo drawing. Which sounds a lot, but the, as soon as you get into that habit of looking all the time at your reference photo, you're really going to start seeing all these little changes in fur. And that's just going to help get your... Um, drawings even more realistic because you're going to notice the little bits the little changes like here where we've just got a little bit of a fur change or here where it's just starting to curve downwards and it's these little changes that are going to make all the difference to your work and this is going to take time it's going to take time just to build up you don't have to do as much of the body as i'm doing Again, if you wanted to stop at the neck, you could do a nice little curved neck. Um, just do it how you want your piece to look. I want you to feel like you've got that confidence as well to make the piece your own. Even if you are following along. So if you see colours that I don't see, use them. If you don't see the colours I'm using, don't use them. I want you to be able to make it your own, which is why I'm thinking those little mini tutorials i'm so i'm going to discuss the tips the techniques and what i'm doing it'd be nice for you to just have a go yourself as well we'll see i'm i'm hoping that'll work and i hope it will be helpful in some way for people i think having shorter videos rather than these hour-long ones which can be quite a lot to watch um, will be helpful for some people who maybe don't have the time to watch such a long video. But I think these, these real-time tutorials really show you just how long a piece can take. And you could sit for even longer than what I've done for these tutorials. You could sit for a long time changing and darkening and light lightening areas just your preference and how you want your work to look as well so you can see we're starting to get a nice fur direction we're going to have to darken this up but this is all just with the gold but can you see how we're still getting this nice gray tone to the piece this is why i like using these metallics and i'm not pressing hard just light but um we're getting a really nice look now and again, this is curving over. And this is all being done with a gold at the moment. We'll go over with other colours. It would probably look quite nice with the nice curved bottom to go with all the curves in his um body and neck it's one thing about sight hands they are very curvy so doing a curved bottom would be quite a nice a nice way to finish this piece off um if that's what you wanted to do 
Yeah, I'm just going to keep going and get this nice effect on his um, nice edge going on. Okay, and then just looking, this is like the top of his shoulder now. So, right, I'm just going to leave that a little bit for now and I'm just going to come back to um, this highlighted area. So I'm just going to come over this with the gold because I know this is like the highlighted area of the neck and I can use this as a reference point for the shoulders. So I'm just going to bring a few little marks of this gold. Um, and I'm going to bring my one grey one along here because this section we know is a dark highlight. I'm just going to get my eraser. So sometimes you have to work a little differently to how you probably expected um, and build up a point of reference. So this area I know is dark. Um, and I can use this as a point of reference for the rest of this shoulder, which can get a bit confusing. I feel that maybe I've been working on this a little bit too low down um, from the reference photo, but that's fine because because we've used light pressure, we can change it. Um, where's my brush? Um, I'm not sure where my brush has gone, actually. Okay, let's use my putty eraser then just to these bits of a razor off. Okay, right, so come in all the way down here. Down the shoulder. And over that tape so that we get a nice straight edge. So I'm going right up to that tape and going over it so that I know that all the paper um, as close to that tape is covered in pigment. Okay. I'm then going to come in with the copper first and follow that fur direction along here. And along this edge. Um, and then take the warm grey free and again look at all of this still following that fur direction so I'm still constantly looking at my reference photo now this warm grey free is going to act as like the highlight so we've got some nice lighter fur, which isn't as light as the one grey one, but I think it's as light as this one grey free. So I'm going to leave this one grey free as my highlight tone, which now shows that I need to come in with my shadows. So um, I'm going to first of all take my... Um, I'm going to take my burnt umber just along here. I'm going to get a nice dark tone in here. But I want that brownish tone to shine through. And I'm going to bring it along this edge as well. And down here. In this corner. Um, and then I'm going to take my one grey five. And I'm going to take this... 
over the top. This actually needs sharpening. And darkening this corner again. And along this edge. Now I'm not too worried about fur detail here because it is slightly out of focus and I don't want the attention to come down the body. We want the attention of this drawing to be on the face. So by just focusing on the tonal values, we're still following that fur direction, but we're not focused too much on detail down here. We focus just mainly tonal value and then hopefully... Once we've finished it, you'll see that the attention is drawn to that face before moving down the body. And I'm bringing this down here. So that warm grey four, just going to go over here. Still leaving some of this warm grey free showing through, especially in this section here. But you're going to overlap some of the warm grey for just to darken some of the areas, make it look more natural. You don't want just like a straight line. Okay. Then coming in with the dark sepia, and this is going to be our darkest tones in here. So fairly high depression now. And I'm just going to darken, especially along this edge. want this to be really dark, lightening up into there, and then there's just some darker sections down here that I'm just going to map in with the dark sepia. And then I'm going to take my warm grey 2 over the top. I'm not going over all of that dark sepia, just where I want it to blend. And then again, just using this one grey two to help um, with the blending. Over the top here. So I think this little section is more or less ready. But again, it'll probably be a section we come back to once we have um, got the rest of the body in. Right, back in with the one grey one as a base layer here. So this area is highlight coming into that shoulder here. So I'm going to, again, follow along here. Probably should have just done this for, as soon as we started this part of the tutorial. Okay, half an hour in. I'm not doing too bad. Maybe another longer one. I don't know whether to... I know I said I wanted this to be the final part, but we'll see. I just, I'm trying not to make these tutorials too long for you all. Um, like the Border Collie one, some of the tutorials were long. And it was a long tutorial overall. Okay, right. I'm then going in with the gold. And I'm going to use this gold. For the fur direction. Um, and it sort of curves, so all of this is sort of curving around here, so that's what I'm going to do here, is just follow that curve, so I'm going to bring that down here more, so this area is going to be darker again. I'm also making this dog my own, like, like I said before, I'm not too fussed about it being exact to the reference photo. I want it to look realistic, so following that fur, getting those dark tones in, where we need to go darker in some areas. 
but also just making this image my own. And bringing this down here, and that's where it starts to curve here, but come straighter here. Okay. Right, and then I'm going to go in with the uh, one grey free. Over this edge. Bring this round here as well. Curve. It's constantly following that third direction with each layer that we add. And then I'm going to go over the top of all that with the one grey two. And down here. Taking the one grey five, and I'm just going to start here. I know it's darker, so I'm just going to darken up. Okay, I'm just going to keep an eye on all these darker shapes that I can see. Just darken this little bit of him again. <coughs> Don't know why my dog barks then, I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably made you all jump like it did me. Again, I'm just darkening along here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the one grey four here. Don't want it to be as dark. Got medium pressure just so that I'm getting enough pigment down on the paper. really did make me jump to my dog. <laughs> He's pretty good. I can't complain. He's normally quite quiet. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, happy with that. Uh, back just to the long grey too. Okay, so I can see that I want to just darken here again. So the one grey four. Just along this edge, it's just going to help darken up here. Like so. 
Right, so I now know that this is like the corner of the shoulder coming through. So I'm going to come in with my copper uh, because this section is coming this way. And I'm just going to use the copper to map out this section of fur. We're going to get a nice shoulder blade coming in in here. Um, I'm also going to bring this copper down into this section here. Right, so taking now my cold gray four. And just bring this along here. I may have to, um, not that it will affect you guys, but I may have to stop recording and come back to this later on. I think the dog is wanting a walk. So if the setup of filming changes um, halfway through, or well, more over halfway now, but. <laughs> You know why. <laughs> the video will just keep going for you guys, but I may have to stop. Okay, so that was the Colgrey 4. Right, I feel like this section isn't quite finished, so I'm just going to come back in with my copper. I feel like this is looking a bit messy still, so I'm going to tidy this up. Because it's all going to blend into this section. That was the copper. And then the warm grey too. Okay, that looks better. Um, warm grey free and this is going to start to darken this section which is coming into the shoulder so again follow that fur direction nice curved lines here which we'll, we will darken up again but we're just going to use this warm grey free to help us for now and I'm just going to bring that in here as well. And along here. Okay, uh, my warm grey five. So this is coming. Actually, we want the burnt umber. Um, I want some of this brown tone in this shadow. So the burnt umber. Along here. Um, and then back to the copper. And then the one grey five. And I can bring that a bit further up now. Uh, back to the one grey four. Because I know that this can be darker. So as you can see, just a bit of back and forth again. But I can darken this area up. Again, it's just about getting those tonal contrasts right. So as we get one area in, we can go, okay, this area needs to be just a little bit darker. Um, and then back to the warm grey five. Uh, 
and to the one by four. And you can see now that we're really starting to get a nice shape to this shoulder and neck and a nice transition between these two areas. Um, okay, so I'm just going to bring this one gray far a bit more into here. Curve it around here. And along here. Um, and then the one by three. Um, and the cold grey four, just a bit of a blue tone now coming down this side. And then the cold grey five, just to darken where I need to again, just along here. Just a bit of back and forth, one grey four. As I just add tones and add these tonal values to darken up these areas. You can see now that we're really starting to get a nice depth of colour everywhere. A lot of layering, especially on Fabriano paper. It can take a lot of layers, so we can add layers. And we're removing that grain of the paper with all these layers that we're adding. But we're just adding more depth to the fur as well. Okay. Right, so back to the base layer. And now that I've got this section in, I'm going to come back over here and we're going to start along here um, because we now have points of reference that we can use for this section, which obviously at the moment just looks like a really scary white expanse. But it's going to come together as part of this guy's fur. Um, okay, so let's just do this little section here, I think. So we need to start from the neck. Um, so I'm going to take my copper. And I know this area is darker, so I'm coming in with the copper to darken here. Which is curving around here. I'm coming down here. I'm going to go over that with the warm grey free. And I'm going to bring the warm grey free all along here now, just following that fur direction. Um, and I'm going to bring this one way free down here. And it just starts to curve ever so slightly as we get to about here. So 
You can see it's light pressure. I'm not pressing hard at all. And if you're worried that you're pressing too hard, hold your pencil higher up. So if you hold it halfway, then you're limited on the amount of pressure that you can add. So that's about the pressure that I'm adding to the paper. Um, I hold it lower down because I've got used to the pencils and I um, I know the correct amount of pressure that I want to apply. So as you're learning, it does help to hold this higher up. Um, and then I'm going to go over that with the gold. Again, small lines for this smooth fur. Now this is quite light at the moment. We do want this to be darker. So I'm going to go back in over the top of this soon. Um, to know how dark we want to go, we just need to darken this section. So I'm going to come in with a warm grey four. And the warm grey four is going to come to about here. So all of this section here needs to be darker. And it's curving round here. Okay, so we're hitting, we're nearly hitting the hour mark. Um, I am going to try and finish this area. So it may be a bit of a longer tutorial. So I hope that's okay. Um, obviously you can slow it down and do it at your own pace, stop and start as and when. Um, but if Seems a bit of a strange place to stop. <laughs> it's curving round here. So you can see we're getting darker here already. Um, and then I'm just going to take the copper and And then the gold. And then over the top of that gold, the one grey free. Then back to the um, one grey five here, just to darken this section. And then I'm going to use light pressure over the top here. And that's just going to add some little fur strokes that are a little darker than that one grey three. But very light pressure. Okay, then back to the uh, one grey four. And then I'm just going to taper these edges so that I know that we need to blend this darker warm grey into that lighter grey. Okay, so you can see the difference now where we've blended. Starting to get that nice tapered look. Right, I'm going to come in with the warm grey one and all along this shoulder. 
I actually kind of just want to get this base layer across the whole page, but um, to make it easy, we're just going to do it in sections. So this part here we know is the shoulder. Now I'm just going to show you guys, uh, don't follow this part, but I'm just going to show you um, where we have this tape. If I just slowly lift this tape, do you see how we've got that nice straight line? So this is the effect that we're going for on this side and this side. Um, but it's important that as you're doing this section, you're bringing your pencil over the top. So that we're making sure that that pigment goes right up to that tape line and we'll get that nice straight line. Um, I just thought I would point that out while I am sort of at this point of the um, page. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the... First of all, I'm going to take the gold. And um, I am going to follow this fur direction. Which is curving round here and down um, and slightly here and then that curves downwards here so I'm using the gold to map in the fur direction so that's gonna curve ever so slightly here I'm still looking at that reference photo for this fur direction. Very short pencil strokes. And this is all with the gold. So you can see the difference between where we have the gold and the base layer. It just It's still a grey colour even though we're using gold. And this is why I like using the gold and the copper because we still get these really nice tones. And you're going to use this gold across the whole of this shoulder section, just mapping in that fur direction. And then once we've got this in, we'll use some of the copper... And then we'll go over the whole thing, first of all with the warm grey free, I'm thinking. Um, and then some of the areas where we've got dark tones will be the warm grey four. But we, we're almost there, nearly there. And then it'll be just about adding little final details like the whiskers. Because as I've just looked at his face, I've realised that we haven't added them in. <laughs> So the next tutorial is a spaniel. Um, I've got it outlined ready to start for February. So it'll be released in February. Um, but I'm thinking it's going to be quite a long tutorial because we have the curly spaniel ear to do, which I think I'm going to break down into several parts. Because curls can be overwhelming and rather than doing like a really long part we will just break it down into easy sections and how I would do it um, I would work sort of on the ear and then other parts of the face if it was a commission so we'll just make it as easy as possible okay so we now have this shoulder 
in place with the uh, with the gold. Um, I'm then going to come in with a bit of this burnt umber first, very very light pressure. Don't want to use hard pressure at all, and I'm just going to add this burnt umber on this tip here, like so, and bring this over that tape. Okay, so I'm now going to come over with the warm grey free. And we're just going to start blending and making this fur look soft, but also getting these tonal values in now. The shifts in tone. Okay, so... Um, the, actually I'm going to come in with my copper, we've not come over with the copper yet. So I've got my copper and I am going to start adding in where just I can see some like darker tones with like that pinkish brownish undertone and I'm going to add these in with the copper. And as I'm drawing this, you can see I'm still following that fur direction. I'm kind of changing it in some way to what I've got with the gold. Um, and that's fine because as I build up these layers, it'll start to make sense. And we'll start to get a nice, even direction to this fur. And again, just along here. So this is more straight along here. And then along here where it's a bit darker. And then it curves down here. Now this section looks quite messy at the moment, but as we build up the layers and we're going to come in again with the warm grey far and probably free, it'll really smooth out and um, look finished like the rest of the piece has. So I'm just coming over all this with the copper. Okay, so I'm now coming in with a warm grey four. And just start darkening here. I'm kind of contemplating doing this, uh, the rest of this dog in another part. I feel it's getting quite long and we still have quite a bit to do. So I'm going to finish this section up, end this part of the tutorial here, and then film the final part. Um, so I think, I think are we on to part eight? It will be part eight. Um, but I don't, I, yeah, I don't want these tutorials to be too long and I feel like we'll be hitting at least another half an hour um, to get this section in and do the finishing touches. So um, I definitely don't want this, this part of the tutorial to be two hours plus. So we'll do this section. Um, I'll upload this part um, and then the other part... Um, the day after so that you get all the parts done okay so I'm just using the warm grey for I 
also means that we can all have a little bit of a break and then come back and sort out the shoulder. Okay, and then I'm just going to taper these edges here. Take the warm grey free. Along here. So you can see just how tidying this little part of the um, shoulder up. We just need to tidy it down here. And then it will all come together as we add those extra little layers. So I'm going to end this part here, which I know we're at a bit of a messy stage, but it's also a good stage to end as to like trusting the process. We're, we're at a bit of a messy stage. We'll keep going and we will um, finish this part off. So I will zoom you out a little bit. Just about fit him in. So we're almost there, but you can see now how adding this body is really grounding him in nicely. Um, so yeah, I will see you all in the final part. Um, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will finish him in the next part. Bye everybody.